Hey, this is Joe with Grow It, Build It, and today we're going to talk about how to separate seedlings. When you grow flowers from seed, it is very likely that you will need to separate seedlings at some point. And if you're winter sowing, it's basically inevitable as you're going to be scattering seeds across milk jugs or six packs, and you're, just, you're probably going to have a whole lot more germinate. In this video, I'm going to show you how I separate seedlings. I'll be going over methods to separate and transplant into larger pots, as well as direct transplanting into the ground. I'll show the tools and methods that work for me. Separating seedlings can be a bit tricky, and you won't always have every seedling survive. But hopefully you can gain a bit from my experience to give you the highest seedling survival rate. But in this video, what we're going to cover, what do you need to consider before separating and when should you do it timing-wise? What steps should you do before you begin preparation? Then we'll go through some general methods on separating seedlings for both milk jugs and in six packs. Then we'll talk about how we can deal with transplant shock and how we take care of them after separation. And then we will review. All right, so hopefully you can benefit from this video and that it will give you some confidence that you can successfully do this for your own plants. All right, so spring is here and your seeds are coming up quite nicely. But before you know it, you got a lot more plants than you thought you would have. Now you start thinking, well, maybe instead of six plants, I could have 12, 18, 30. Well, before you undertake any of that, realistically, you need to consider how many of this plant you want to have. As gardeners, it can be tempting to try to give every seedling a chance at life, but this is often just a wasted effort on our part. If you don't have room for all those extra plants, I mean, you can try to give them away or sell them, but I find that in the end, I often don't have room for them and I throw them away, I compost them. It was a wasted effort. So realistically, plan for how many of this plant you're going to want to have and go for that. And if that means that you should only thin plants instead of separate them, then do so. When is the right time to separate seedlings? Well, timing on separating seedlings can be a little tricky. Each species is going to be a little different, but I'll share with you my general guidelines. Typically, you want to wait until a seedling has one to three sets of true leaves before you separate them. At least one for sure. This usually allows for more root structure and stronger plants that can withstand the trauma of separation better. And what are true leaves? Well, each seed that germinates will put out two leaves initially known as cotyledons. These leaves are initial food for the plant that was stored within the seed embryo, and they're going to be of a different shape and form than the actual leaves of a mature plant. So we don't want to separate yet. But not long after, we will have true leaves develop. And once you have one or two sets of those, you know, you can go ahead and start thinking about separating them. Now, most of the time, I just use my hands to separate seedlings, but every so often you will need a tool. So a toothpick, a pencil, a knife, a plastic fork, they're all good to keep nearby just in case you need them to help loosen roots or something like that. In addition to this, you will also need to have all your pots filled with moist potting soil ahead of time. You want to be ready to go when it's time to start separating. Okay, so after doing this for many years, I've learned some general principles that seem to be somewhat universal. And it all starts with how developed are the seedlings. Immature seedlings will have true leaves, but not many roots. If you pull a cell from a six pack and it breaks apart, the seedlings are immature. Also note that if you have sown too heavily, the seedlings may never develop very well and should be thinned for the survivors to grow big enough to even transplant. Conversely, if you can pull a cell from the six pack by its leaves of the plant and it feels very firm, you know, it's, you probably have mature seedlings and you'll see the, that in the roots when you pull them out. If the seedlings are immature and the roots are not entangled, then consider these immature. Try to only pull on the plant from the true leaves and make sure the soil is moist as the seedlings will separate much easier. Try not to grab the stalk or the roots as they're immature and can be crushed fairly easily, which can be fatal for the plant. Okay, so that's for when the seedlings are young. When you peel some away and go to repot them, if you're placing them into pots that are like four inches diameter or less, this is a good method for potting up small seedlings. I'm gonna use Microsoft Paint to explain this, how you can pot up small seedlings. This is a general way I do it. Um, I take a pot and I add a base layer of soil and then I fill the pot one third to halfway across, leaving a small seedling with not that much roots. This will allow me to tilt the pot to the side and put the seedling in and let gravity help hold it in place. And while I add soil and apply gentle pressure to the fill soil to give everything a foothold. Finally, I finish the fill, make sure it's somewhat firm and the operation is done. This works with small seedlings. It's giving me the best success rate. 
Also, I want to point out that this entire video does exist as an article at our website, which I'll link to below. So if you want to get a quick reference later, then just head over there. And also, if you are enjoying this content, please click the thumbs up as it really does help me out and I greatly appreciate it. For larger seedlings that are two to three inches tall, or you can see a well-developed root system, you can be much rougher with the plant. The stalks and the roots can still be crushed, so don't pinch them, but you can pull on them to separate. Also, when root systems are very developed, I find that pulling apart at the dirt level, like pulling apart at the root crowns, works pretty well. Just about the best way to separate seedlings. This is sort of hard to describe, but if you are pulling two plants apart and they're not moving, stop. You are probably about to rip leaves or stalks out. But if you're pulling and they are slowly separating, you can probably keep going. Because the plants, you know, they're untangling themselves. And if you have a total mess of roots, you can even just carefully rip the thing in half. Then peel off the healthy seedlings that you want. In this example, I turned this oversown mess into healthy verbena hostata with 100% survival rate for the seedlings I repotted. And also, this does apply for any plant, but if it's possible, try to keep as much soil that is attached to the roots intact. The more soil that stays attached to the roots will lead to a faster recovery and higher survivability. Now I'm going to show examples of separating timely seedlings and mature seedlings for both milk jugs and six packs. If you winter sowed seeds in using milk jugs or similar containers, then here's what you can do for small seedlings where they haven't had too much time to uh, develop. Just use a fork or a spoon to scoop the seedlings up and drop the clump of dirt into its prepared pots. This is very easy and you can discard any seedlings that you don't want and the roots are probably not that entangled, so this is very easy. This example is spice bush. The first set of true leaves is starting to show, but I wanted to separate now by scooping them up, uh, which allows more dirt to remain on the roots, but even if it doesn't, it, it's okay. Um, I had 100% survival rate here. Now, if you get too busy with life and don't have time to do this when they're tiny, the seedlings are going to keep on growing, but we can still separate them. Here's some self-heal that I have winter sown. To separate it, I'm just gently breaking apart the soil clump with my hands, letting it give where it wants to. And then I start pulling individual plants apart and I'm potting them up. And I'm kind of pulling at the base of the root crown. Um, just take care not to crush anything or pinch anything. So I got 12 plants out of this and they all survived, so I'm happy about that. But I still had a decent amount left over. So what should I do now? Well, this brings us to the hunk of seedlings method. You can literally just cut chunks out of the plant of mass and put them into their final location. I'm trying to get this plant established in my lawn, believe it or not. So that's why I'm putting it in grass. But uh, to do this, just take a knife and cut out a chunk of uh, plants or pull it and, you know, plant it where you want. This works very well. So why would you pot up seedlings versus doing the hunko seedlings method? Because hunko seedlings method is really easy. Why go to the trouble of individual seedlings to pot up? Well, one factor is the number of plants you want. If you want more plants, you can get more by carefully separating seedlings. But isolating a seedling often results in more dirt that was attached to the roots falling away, leaving like naked roots. It's going to need a little more TLC, and that's why potting them up matters. Whereas with the hunko seedlings, when you cut out a chunk, you're going to have a lot of the dirt root uh, intact, it'll allow for at least one or more of the seedlings to survive relatively undisturbed. Also, if you have a significant amount of deer and rabbit pressure and can't protect them with liquid fence very well, then potting up might be a better option, as young seedlings can't survive that much browsing from deer and rabbits, whereas larger, more developed plants can. Okay, so now we're going to talk about separating in six packs. It is harder to separate seedlings in six packs, and this is mainly due to having a smaller area to work with, but the same principles still apply. It's just a smaller work area. I found that tilting the six pack or pot on its side when you remove the seedling cluster helps hold everything together much better. For immature seedlings, I can just pull at the true leaves and the plants separate very easily as the roots are not developed too much or entangled. In this example, I massage the walls of the cell and then slide the plants out. And then I can start peeling away plants and then breaking up the cell itself and peeling away as I go. Just pull on the leaves only and you should be good. For an extreme case of separating seedlings, here's some cardinal flowers. These seeds for this plant are like powder and so you can't help but over sow them when you do it because they're so tiny. How do you not over sow these? But um, this leads to very small, much smaller seedlings and even if you thin them they may still be really tiny. So what do I do here? Well you just gently break apart the dirt 
and then you can use tweezers to gently grip the leaves and get the seedling into place and then push the dirt in to fill the hole. Now I separated 12 cardinal flowers on June 6th and here are those plants one month later on July 7th. So quite the difference. And then if we look back at the original six pack, they're still tiny. This shows how thinning or, you know, just isolating seedlings will allow the plant to grow much bigger. For mature seedlings out of a six pack, you can pull fairly forcefully on uh, the plants. I'm doing that with these seedlings and just pop them up. The root systems have developed enough that all of these plants I did this to survived. It's not a guaranteed, but once the seedlings are of a decent size, it's pretty easy to keep them alive. Now I want to talk about transplant shock. Anytime a plant has its roots exposed or naked or just lose contact with most of the dirt, they're going to be very vulnerable to stress. So what do you do? Simple. You place the plants in shade for about a week. I either leave them in my garage for a week or so or place them where they may just get a bit of morning sun and no more. The roots can't transport much water and nutrients until they've reattached themselves to soil. After a week, they can be placed back outside in a location with more sun. You can now grow them as large as their pot will allow or transplant them to a final location, whatever you prefer. Okay, time to review. Separating seedlings is a delicate job that can easily be done with proper preparation and care. Make sure you've got all your materials ahead of time, pots and any tools that you may need. Make sure the soil is moist both for the seedlings and the pots. For immature seedlings, try to only pull on the true leaves, being exceptionally gentle with stems and roots. For mature seedlings, you can be much rougher, but if you're pulling and nothing is moving, then something might break. So just know that, and depending on how heavily sown the pot is, will determine how much you need to worry about it. And then to avoid transplant shock, let the plant sit in a shaded area for about a week until after transplanting, it will raise the survival rate substantially. Well, that's all I've got for you guys today. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, found it fairly useful. Again, if you have questions, please ask them in the comments as I always try to answer them. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up as it greatly helps my channel out and I do appreciate it. And yeah, you guys all have a good one.